Hello everyone, this is Neon. Welcome to Impromptu English with Neon. And today we're going to talk about something which is very, very important. If you have to speak in English in a country where English is usually spoken for business purposes, for formality, even if it's for classes or other reasons, it's very important for professional and academic purposes. We're talking about politeness while using language. And of course, it doesn't only have to deal with English. Also in Bangla, suppose we say something like "eta kore dao," or rather, we say something like "ektu kosto kore eta kore dite parben." My Bangla viewers, you know what I'm talking about. If you just say directly something like "do this," even if we say it in a very polite tone, it doesn't sound as good as if you said something like. Can you please do something or can you please kindly help me with this? So when you indirectly say something, it is more polite. And there are other reasons, other ways you can actually make your language polite. You can see on the slide that can you pass me, for example, can you pass me that salt? Can you pass me some sugar instead of give me sugar? Or if you say excuse me instead of saying move out of the way. Or if you say, I'm afraid I cannot do that, instead of saying, no, I don't want to do that, or something. And also, if you look on the right side, you'll see that politeness actually depends on the culture. Sometimes you, you shake your hand with somebody, and sometimes you bow down, or you take a small bow. It also has to do with something outside of language, for example, body language, gestures, postures. They're also related to language, technically, but even if we stick written language, spoken or written language, still, its importance knows no bounds. So to get technical about politeness, what is it actually? Researchers have actually given definitions for the word politeness. For example, sociological research and other linguistics research regarding sociology such as sociolinguistics. For example, you can see politeness may be understood as a specific type of linguistic structure which, quote unquote, expresses the speaker's attitude and are thus not explicable, which is explainable or which is something that cannot be explained just by semantic, which is meaning related, but rather by pragmatic means. So if you remember, linguistics is divided into many branches. One of them is semantics, which is about the literal meaning. Another is about pragmatics, which is about the contextual meaning. So politeness is related to pragmatics. So this was said by Held in 2005. So Yule, George Yule, if you have read his book on the study of language, it's a very, very famous book. So he said, a linguistic interaction is necessarily a social interaction. Obviously, when we use language, it is for 99.999% of the time for social reasons because we are communicating with each other. Or maybe at least we are, even if it's a one-sided speech, it is for another person, it's for social interactions. Moving on with the, with his, moving on with the code, thus, Participants do not only convey meaning, but also observe social rules and their utterances are shaped also by social distance and closeness. It's very clear what it said here. So if you are very close to somebody, then you can say things very directly. Like we speak to our friends, do this, do that, I'm not feeling good. But if it's not a close friend or if it's somebody senior to us, we can say something like, I think that there may be a problem with this rather than just saying that, no, this is not good. Or if you don't agree or if you don't like something, if it's a friend, you can just say, I don't like this. It doesn't go with me. But if it's not a friend, if it's somebody very senior, you can say something a little bit indirectly. So we will go to some particular examples of how to do this. Before that, let us discuss the concept of phase, which is the most important part, which is the most important element of this lecture. Phase, what does that mean? 
does it mean our face, our human face, or maybe other animals' face? So it has a metaphorical meaning. It means the public self-image or the prestige. I think some of you may have heard of the term saving face. So that means that you are saving your own prestige or other people's prestige. For example, people might complain about being insulted or about being humiliated in front of other people. They can say something like, why did you say that to me in front of the public? You could have told me privately. Why did you say it in front of others? Because it hurts my prestige. So they're talking about their face, about what the other people, what general people think about them. So why are we actually more concerned with our face, our public image of ourselves, not our private image? Why so? Is that a social phenomenon? Is there a reason why we are concerned about our public prestige, not our private prestige? Well, even if it's a private conversation, other people are not hearing. Still, face is important. It is not always public, but it is also sometimes only with the other person. Suppose that you have gone to your teacher to talk about something. Still, you have to be very polite. Even though other people are not seeing this, still you should be polite, right? So we are, or we at least should be, aware of what we say, how we say it, to whom we are saying it. As I was saying, if it's a teacher, we speak differently and how much we should say. So if we have time, if it's a very close friend or if it's like an elder sister who we share our problems with, maybe we can talk in details, but not with everybody. We think of our face as well, not on the other people's face, like what will he or she think, but also our own face. If I speak like this, what will he or she think of me? How will I come across? about how others will perceive us when we speak. So if we want to divide it, we can think of two faces. We actually think of two faces. The one that we are talking to, or it may be multiple people, the audience's face, or the other person's face, singular, or our own face. So when we think of our own face, we are defensive. We try to think of defensive manners, defensive techniques, the way we speak, we try to ensure that we ourselves, our prestige doesn't get lowered. And also while we speak, we think about that person. If we say something that may insult or hurt them, we sometimes think that, oh, okay, I will not say it like that. I will speak it softly. So we think about both the other person as well as ourselves. So we come to the concepts of positive and negative face. So your desire for others, others to have a positive attitude about you. So we are talking about personal face, your own face. You want others to think positively about you. That is positive face. In other words, you want people to respect you, to like you, to revere you, etc. For example, if you say, wow, you've made significant progress on this project. Your dedication is truly admirable. Is there anything I can do to assist you in meeting the deadline? So see this example. It's a very long example, you can say, but it's actually something we all do. The main question is the one at the very end, the last sentence. Is there anything I can do to assist you in meeting the deadline? You could very easily say this in a condensed manner. You could just say, can I help you with this? But first you praised him or her. First you said, wow, you've made significant progress on this project. Your dedication is truly admirable. So these two sentences, they are completely unnecessary in one sense, but it's actually socially necessary. You need to praise others, especially if you have something to gain or if you, if you don't praise the other person, maybe something bad will happen at least the social relationship, it will not be very good. So to maintain it, we sometimes speak unnecessarily, which we don't actually need to say, but we say it out of respect and out of politeness. This is called positive phase because you say this so that the other person will think good of you. There is another kind of phase saving technique that is called negative phase, negative phase saving techniques. 
for example your desire for freedom and autonomy in other words you want to be able to do what you want and when you want for example i understand you're busy and i hate to interrupt if you have a moment could you possibly could we possibly discuss how i might be able to support you with the project deadline so suppose that you want something from someone else for example you want your teacher to check the scripts because you want your marks or maybe you want some feedback so how can you say this you can say something like ma'am i know you're very busy your in-laws have come to visit you or during ramadan it's very tiresome to do work however i'm facing a lot of trouble in this topic could you please check my homework and give some small feedback minor feedback because it will be very important it will be very valuable to me so the first few sentences they can be considered a little unnecessary you could just say ma'am can you please check my homework however if you said that it would be a little impolite even if not impolite still it would not be a negative face saving strategy so why is it negative does negative means does negative mean that it is bad no negative means that you are concerned about your teachers desire for freedom because we all know we don't want to give a lot of time for work most probably and for many other things if you want to ask someone to do something for you you should consider that okay why will he or she do this for me they have to spend some time they have to spend some energy even maybe sometimes money to get that done so why will he or she do that so if you say it in a polite way if you say that okay i'm sorry that i'm asking you you're you must be very busy but can you please write me a letter of recommendation for me because it will be very very helpful for me and i will forever remember that so if you add some sentences that is related to particularly negative phase because you are concerned for their freedom whereas the positive phase it is particularly about having a positive attitude about you by praising them so there are some particular strategies finally we have come to some particular strategies number one be indirect as i said for example i would highly appreciate it if you could kindly check my homework it's a little long sentence but it is definitely better than please check my homework so just adding please does not make it polite number two interrogative sentences so do you know this that if you make your statement into a question into an interrogative sentence into an interrogative statement then it is more polite for example if you say let me know it's actually a little direct if you want to make it indirect and this also goes in line with the first strategy you can make it a question you can say can you please let me know or can you let me know or if it's something like ma'am please check the homework so how can you say that ma'am if you could ma'am could you please check the homework and send it back to me i will very much appreciate it so turning it into a question makes it a little indirect number three you can be pessimistic about yourself actually this is actually used by many people who i know they say that okay i didn't do a good in this test you will be first you will get a plus and i will get only a b or c so this the reason people do this one of the reasons is to be humble to be pessimistic about themselves but also to put the other person on a higher pedestal so that you respect another person more than actually what you think about yourself this is also a strategy for being polite so what is the imposition the imposition is something that you want your other person to do it's a request or a command for example if you want somebody to help you you could say i hate to bother you but could you please help me with this instead of just saying please help me with this you can say i'm sorry that i'm bothering you but if you have some time 
can you please help me with this i promise it will not take much time maybe it will take five minutes it will be very helpful for me so if you say something like this it's more polite number five give deference which means to give some praise if it's not too much trouble could you possibly share your expertise on this manner so you're praising the other person that okay you're very much an expert on this can you please share that expertise with us number six and it's also included in the other ones as well if you say sorry that is also a negative politeness strategy i'm sorry about doing this but could you please help me regarding this could you please check the homework could you please teach me this topic number seven instead of saying i and you you can say we that makes it more inclusive that makes it more personal now let's go to positive politeness strategies so we have talked about negative politeness strategies which is about the other person's need or desire to be free to not be imposed upon but this one is about praise so how can you praise the other person you can pay attention whenever they speak you can make sure that you are showing him or her that you are a very good listener. For example, noticing and attending to the hearer. Would you like some help with that task? That means that if someone is talking about something, you can say that, okay, uh, can I help you regarding this? Number two, exaggerate. So I think we all do this. We, we exaggerate our praise. We exaggerate things we say to other people. For example, you did an incredible job on that presentation. Or we could say that, wow, you're like a writer. Your writing is so perfect. It doesn't have any grammar mistakes at all. We can say that, wow, that was a Shakespearean performance. You did so well. So we exaggerate to show our politeness. Number three, we can intensify or strengthen our agreement. If we agree with them, we can actually make it very clear that we agree. For example, if we say, you're absolutely right about that. It's a fantastic idea. It's an awesome idea. How could you come up with that? Are you a genius? So it's also something like oiling someone, but it's a politeness strategy that people do to give praise. Number four, use in-group identity markers such as we instead of you or why. So if you remember, it was also part of a negative politeness strategy. However, it's also a positive politeness strategy to include everyone. It's also something like praising them, like we can do this together. Number six, if you avoid disagreement, so it goes in line with the, which one? With the third one. If you agree with somebody, please make it very intense, make it very clear that you agree. So being polite doesn't mean that you always have to agree. If you disagree, then do it in a way, then say it in a way that it doesn't sound very aggressive for example you can say that okay i see your point however i think that uh, i will think about it or if if you do not like something you can say that okay that is a good idea i will think about it or i will agree to disagree or i think that okay you said something and i said something let's find a way to come in the middle so even if you disagree you have to be polite about it Number seven, presuppose or raise or assert common ground. What is a common ground? Something that you both agree with. Suppose you don't agree with many things, but you also don't disagree with most things. So you have to find the common ground. We both know how important teamwork is. So let's collaborate on this project. You have to find some common ground or some things which apply to both of you. Because we are different human beings, we will not have the same likes or dislikes. You should talk about the things that you both like. So there you have it, guys. These were the positive as well as negative politeness strategies. Not only should you think about these strategies and try to learn these strategies, but you should also apply them. So in my opinion, this sociolinguistic competence is more important than grammatical or linguistic competence. Because even if you are inaccurate, even if some of your grammar is problematic at least if you're polite then people will think that okay maybe he or she is, is speaking broken english but he or she is so polite so generous so that is more important in the real life thank you guys hope you enjoyed and hope you stay with me on my journey to become more fluent in english 
and subscribe if you like the content.